Hello, everyone. Welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to talk about the acetoacetic ester synthesis. This is a very specific reaction that is helpful in synthesizing ketones, especially ketones featuring different alkyl groups. And what we do here is we synthesize ketones from acetoacetic ester by alkylating the alpha carbon of acetoacetic ester. The product that we get from this reaction can be called an alkylated acetone. Okay, that's what it is. So it's a derivative of acetone in some sense. So let's look at the reaction here. So the starting molecule, the precursor here, uh, is ethyl acetoacetate. This is ethyl acetoacetate, which is also called the acetoacetic ester. Okay, so they're both basically the names for this particular compound. And what we do in this reaction is we react it with a base. And as you can imagine, the alpha hydrogens here in between the two keto groups, okay, there's a carbonyl group, a ketone group, and there's an ester group. So the alpha hydrogens in the middle here, these are particularly acidic. Their pKa values are going to be somewhere in the range of 10 to 12 pKa units. Okay, so they will be somewhere in that range. The pKa should be in the 10 to 12 range, essentially. So when you treat it with a, bed, with a base, you should be able to deprotonate these alpha hydrogens, one of them, uh, very effectively uh, and efficiently. And then when you treat it with an alkyl halide, you're able to add the alkyl group over there. And then a final workup with it gives you the product, which like I mentioned earlier, is an alkylated acetone. Now that's because this part of the molecule here, this is basically acetone. If there is no R group, what we are looking at here is an acetone molecule. So that's why we can call it an alkylated acetone, which means an acetone with an alkyl group added to it. Now, there are two alpha hydrogens here, which means that in principle, you can deprotonate them sequentially and add two alkyl groups at that alpha carbon. We'll first look at this generalized example, and then you're going to look at some specific examples for the synthesis of alkylated acetone here. So let's look at the steps in this uh, reaction. Uh, this is not really a detailed mechanism, but it's going to be a very, uh, very simple mechanism that we're going to look at, but not a lot of detail is included, but we're going to look through all the steps as to what's happening in each step. So we start with this ethyl acetoacetate or the acetoacetic ester, and when we treat it with the base, the base can deprotonate and efficiently deprotonate the alpha hydrogen here because of the favorable pKa values here. Okay, so the base is going to deprotonate one of these alpha hydrogens. The electrons are going to end up on the alpha carbon and that would give us the enoid. So it would give us the enoid corresponding to this acetoacetic ester. So that's the first step. In the second step, we react this with alkyl halide, with an alkyl halide. Now this reaction is SN2-like, which means all the limitations for an SN2 reaction apply here. So the alkyl halides that would work best here are methyl or primary alkyl halides, okay? So uh, CH3X or a primary alkyl halide. These would be the best for this step. But essentially we have the enolate here, which as we know is a nucleophile. And so the nucleophile can now go and attack the R group and the X would get kicked out. So we will get the alkylated 
ethyl acetal acetate here. Okay, so we'll get the alkylated compound. Now the third step here is the hydrolysis. And as you can imagine, when you do a hydrolysis of this compound, because this is an ester, okay, uh, under these conditions where we have the acid and we are heating it, the ester is going to get decarboxylated. So we will get, sorry, the ester would get decarboxylated, but initially the ester is going to get hydrolyzed, okay? So the ester would get hydrolyzed initially so that we will get the carboxylic acid. So the ester has been hydrolyzed here. That would be the first step. Now, what we've made here, uh, you might recollect from the malonic ester synthesis that what we've made here is a beta keto acid, okay? This structure here is a beta keto acid. So the beta keto acid that we have now, we can rewrite this to show the decarboxylation. Uh, I'm going to write the beta keto acid like this. And we did something similar when we were doing the malonic ester synthesis as well. So we have the beta keto acid here. And under the conditions that we are in, where we have acid and we are heating it, the beta keto acid would undergo the decarboxylation. So the pi bond from there, it can abstract that proton. So there's a proton transfer. The electrons from this bond come into the space between the, the acyl carbon and the oxygen. And simultaneously, the single bond here breaks and it goes into the space between the alpha carbon and the keto carbon. So it is always helpful to track the alpha carbon. So the alpha carbon and the keto carbon. And so essentially what we're going to get after this is going to be R, you'll have a double bond between the alpha carbon and the uh, carbonyl carbon. So this is our alpha carbon, single bond, and then we're going to have an OH like that. So we'll get that and plus we will have carbon dioxide from this other carboxylic acid. And this species that we've generated here, this is basically the enol, okay? This is an enol. So the enol can undergo tautomerization where the double bond goes to the space between the carbon and the oxygen and the hydrogen comes to the alpha carbon. And so essentially what we're going to get after that is going to be the acetone. So we get the keto form of this compound. And as you can see, the keto form of this compound is the alkylated acetone that we got as the product. So it's basically an initial deprotonation, alkylation, and as I mentioned, this is an SN2 attack. And then we have the hydrolysis, okay? So we have the ester hydrolysis here. And then we've got a decarboxylation going on here. That's where we lose the carbon dioxide. And then finally, a keto enol tautomerization gives us the product. So this keto compound is the product that we have. So that's the generalized step-by-step -step, uh, process that's going on here. Now again, I skipped the mechanism of the ester hydrolysis because that has been previously discussed in a separate video. So please refer to that video if you are interested in the details of an ester hydrolysis. Next, what we're going to look at is some examples where we can use the acetoacetic ester synthesis to make some ketones. Okay, we can use these two examples to work through uh, the acetoacetic ester synthesis and basically understand what sort of products do we make from this reaction. So let's get started. The first example we have is where we are reacting the acetoacetic ester with sodium ethoxide first. Okay, so we react it with the base 
and the base is going to deprotonate the alpha hydrogen, electrons from that bond between the alpha hydrogen and the carbon, alpha carbon, go to build, end up on the alpha carbon. And this is Na plus. So this would give us the enolate corresponding to the acetoacidic ester. So we get the enolate. Next, we are reacting it with ethyl bromide. So there's ethyl bromide. And in ethyl bromide, this is our alpha carbon, which is partially positive because it's connected to the bromine, which is partial negative. It is a primary alkyl halide. It is perfect for doing an SN2 reaction. So essentially the enolate can go and attack this alpha carbon and the BR would get kicked out. And this would give us now an ethyl group at that alpha carbon. So the alpha carbon has been alkylated now. The next step is another treatment with a base. Okay, so we treat this with the base again. And we have another alpha hydrogen there. There are two alpha hydrogens on that carbon. So the base can again deprotonate Electrons go to the alpha carbon. We get the enolate again. So we generate a new enolate by the deprotonation of that second alpha hydrogen. Now, when we add this alkyl halide, which is a cyclopentane methyl based, methyl cyclopentane based alkyl halide. When we add that, again, that alkyl halide is primary in nature. The alpha carbon here is partial positive, the bromine is partial negative. Now, I've used alkyl bromides, they don't have to be alkyl bromides, alkyl chlorides, alkyl iodides, they would all work equally well in this reaction. So, the nucleophile here goes and attacks that carbon, the BR gets kicked out. So now we are going to make a bond between that carbon and the alpha carbon here. So our product, the new product that we make would have an ethyl group on the alpha carbon, and it must additionally have this cyclopentane methyl group. Both of those groups are connected to the alpha carbon. Uh, when we do the hydrolysis with heat, the acid, the sorry, the ester, the ester would get hydrolyzed. So our initial product that we get, or an intermediate that we're going to make under these conditions is going to be the carboxylic acid. So we make the carboxylic acid, but this carboxylic acid is not going to stop there. It's going to undergo decarboxylation. And when you do the decarboxylation, essentially what you're doing is you are removing carbon dioxide from here, okay? You're removing that molecule of carbon dioxide the hydrogen here ends up on that alpha carbon, which means our product from this reaction is going to be this molecule here. Like that. And now if we look at it, this has the acetone fragment in it. CH3, CO, CH3 would be acetone. Okay, so it is an acetone that has been alkylated uh, at the alpha carbon. And we've installed two different alkyl groups. We've installed an ethyl group and we've installed this cyclopentyl methyl group at the alpha carbon of acetone. So that's going to be our final product from this. 
Let's look at the next example here. We're doing monoalkylation here. So when we react this with base, sodium ethoxide, the base is again going to deprotonate the alpha hydrogen. Electrons go to that alpha carbon, which would give us the enolate. So this would give us the enolate corresponding to the acetoacetic ester. Upon reaction with benzyl bromide, which is also a primary alkyl halide. Notice that this carbon where the halogen is connected is primary in nature. So it would work for an SN2. So the nucleophile attacks the alpha carbon, the BR gets kicked out, and so our product now is going to be an alkylated ester, where that benzyl group is now a substituent at the alpha position. Okay, so it's the alpha position that gets alkylated. Hydrolysis with heat would initially convert this ester into the corresponding carboxylic acid. So what we have here is the beta keto carboxylic acid. And then under the reaction conditions here, which is acidic and with heat, the beta keto acid would undergo a decarboxylation. So the carbon dioxide, the carboxylic acid group is going to be eliminated as carbon dioxide. Okay, this results in the loss of carbon dioxide. The hydrogen here would eventually end up at the alpha position here. So our product that we get from this reaction is going to be this ketone where we've added a benzyl group, a phenyl ring and a CH2 to the alpha position of acetone. So that would be the product from this reaction. Now the reaction here itself, it bears a lot of resemblance to the malonic ester synthesis. Uh, so I would encourage looking at that video simultaneously. Uh, the malonic ester synthesis reaction helps synthesize alkylated acetic acids, and this reaction helps us synthesize alkylated acetone. Uh, the product is a ketone in general. I hope uh, you like the discussion and the examples in this video. Bye.